uh, let's welcome our next great speaker, Fiero Fioretti. Uh, we would learn how to create a city generator tool from scratch in Houdini. And so it would be like greatly useful. And now I give the floor to our speaker, Fiero. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Mm, I can't see you, but I know that you can see me. I am Piero Fioretti. I am Udini and a real technical artist at Decimated. And what I'm doing now for them is to create a tool where we can create cities procedurally so that we can go faster in the development of the environment. So here are some of my informations. If you want to write them somewhere for yourself, otherwise I will show them again in the end. So let's jump right into it. So I built this tool that you can see here. We were going to do it again from scratch, which enables us to create a city with roads, sidewalks, different kind of buildings. Eventually, you can put your own assets in this if you want, and you can go further and develop this. Obviously, we have just one hour, so I can't go too deep into this. But uh, I would just show you that you can do, you can change the shape of everything. You can uh, decrease or increase the complexity. You can change everything about the road, the buildings, props scattered all around the city. So let's jump right into this and start with something from scratch. I keep this Udini session open, so eventually I can take reference for the notes there. And OK, so let me just take the Evic pen here so I can write down also a design. What are the ideas that we want to accomplish? So what we want to do is to create a city which is you know just like a grid with complex connections between them. Yeah, not too complex, but enough to give us an idea about the city. I would like to take some reference, but time is really, really low, so we have to go a little bit faster. So if we want to get something to like this, what we can do is try to randomly fi find some lines in a grid, for example. So let's do this. We start from grid, OK? And we can jump to the grid. And we can try to, inside the sub view here, we will take this and make the size of what could be a city, like 1,000 by 1,000. Let's try. Cool. So we have this. As I said before, what we can do is try to put down some points so we can scatter some points. And we can turn off relax iterations here in the scatter, as this just is to, you know, we don't need that. And increase the amount of point as, as much as we want. So we want to connect those lines, but we can use what we can use is actually the add node by adding things that points that have the same x or z coordinate. As you see, we are on the x, z plane here. The y is perpendicular to the plane. And to do this, uh, we can try to do that and, and do something like this with an attribute wrangle, just a few lines of codes all around the, um, the program itself, but worth it. And it will, go, will make us go really faster. So let's try to create an attribute called column for the, and give this H point a column, which would be on the Z axis. So let's take it and P dot X, sorry, X, this is the X. And the same for the rows. We're going to go for the Z here. OK, cool. Let me save this just on desktop GG conference. Perfect. Yeah. OK, so we have each point has a column and a row attribute. What we can do is try to have this, for example, by column. See, in the, if I go in the add and go in polygons, if we go by group and add by attribute, we can connect points by attribute. So if we drop down row, for example, you see that we have this. OK, we have the points and we have this. What if I go for column? We get nothing because those points are really one near to each other. And some of them seem to be on the same line, but they are not on the same line. So what we can do is actually force this to be, force them to be on the same line. So we can do this with a fuse node. 
Fuse node enables us not just to fuse points that are in the same uh, spot, but also to snap points where we want. So indeed here we have, for example, a second is a target geometry. We don't need that in this case because what we're gonna use is in the fuse, instead of snap to near points, we're gonna go with the grade. So what this does, and you will see here now, is that if we increase the grid spacing, you'll see the points starting aligned to a grid, okay? And if we, grid, if we increase the grid tolerance, well, actually, it's not really visible here. I will show it better now. What can happen is that if we go like, for example, yeah, like this, whoop, some of them start to snap more and more and more, okay? So if we wanna, let me take this down, we don't need it. Okay, ignore, cool. So uh, if we make a group of those snap points, and we call it snap points, we can blast those points as snapped. And we go with snap points, delete not selected. You see all the points as snapped, okay? Uh, if we actually decrease this, for example, we have less and less points. What if we do this now instead? What happens? Cool, so we have our rows and our columns. If we merge these together, we have all we need, at least for a initial map. And we can do everything with this fuse, actually. We can, by decreasing the, the grid spacing, we can have more complex stuff or just simpler. You see, it get bigger and bigger. And with the grid tolerance, we can add or just, you know, take down points that we don't need. Okay, so if we see those points, they're actually not really sorted well. So just let's just sort those in a way that is more you know, usable by Z, like this. Yeah, just better. Yeah, sorry, not by, by Z, by X. Cool, like this. And then we go here and we just go by Z. Cool. So let's just use, because we will have some points here that will overlap, like here. And with this, we go from 46 points to 23 points because we had overlapping points. But what happens now? If we take one primitive, we have it that we, we actually are not, we don't have the, the intersection points. And we need this because we can use it also later or to customize this more. What we can do is, find those points, let me say, sometimes it can get, it can get, it can crash here. Uh, we have the intersection stitch, not analysis. Well, the analysis works and, oops, you just find the points, you see here, all the points are found, well, actually not even all of them. What we can do is use the intersection stitch, okay? And you see, we will have all the points already placed and we have uh, we keep our geometry with the points in it. You see, points are now 32. Good. So what we can move to now is to create actually th the road from this. And we can do this by using a, a poly expand. This is really quick way if we go for the offset surfaces, well, you don't see it well now. Okay, now you can start seeing it well. You can see that we already generated a mesh out of the lines that we had in the beginning. So we can actually use this. Probably there are few connections here, a few uh, primitives, but as you can see, there's just this primitive and this primitive, and it's quite big also. If we put down fast textures like the texture here, with the Y coordinate on vertex, quick shape. We have our textures. We can increase obviously those and make them more tight like this. But if we go and put this in a real engine or in Unity, we will see that it doesn't work pretty well with the textures. They're gonna be really stretched probably. So what you can do is actually resample the curve first. So let me. Let's take this down, example, take it here. 
maybe too much if we are big scale. So if, if you see a 10, we have all the points, good points. And if we move this here, well, you won't understand because some points will again uh, be overlapping. So if we just drop a fuse here, it, will, it should work. It should work. And let me just be sure about this. Yep. Whoa, this is strange. It works on the other side. Let me try this with a, oh, maybe we can do like this. Yeah, we can go, what we can do first is actually take those lines that are all disconnected and try to connect all together, okay? If we go after here with a polypath, what we get is that these lines will get, sorry, if we go here, yeah, all the lines will be, you see, oops. you'll see here that this gets connected with a curve. Okay, this is just one. Cool. So in this way, with a resample and a fuse, it should work now. Good. And we offset the surface again. You see how many polygons we have now? All of those. And we will work much better. You can eventually decide how many points you want by just changing the resample, this resample. So let me just highlight the points, sorry, the nodes that will be useful also to change later on. We can change this with the global seed. We can change the, where is it, the fuse here. We can change this resample so that we have different resolution. So we had, we made, I just press in shift L if you don't know actually for just ordering everything. So we already made the streets, okay? We have the roads. We can put down a color if we want. We just take this down and define the color. If we want it black, we can have it. Cool. So what else we have in a city apart from the roads? We have the sidewalks. So we can take start from what we have here to create the sidewalks. So the thing is, we take uh, we start from this, and what we can do is actually use the same kind of logic we used here. So we'll use a poly expand, okay? But instead of using a poly expand with offset surface, we can actually offset curves, which gives us this strange thing with all the with a big primitive on top of everything. But if you go in the wireframe you see that we have exactly the borders of all the roads and we can build on that. How can we isolate this from the big primitives that we have here? You can just do as before a polypath. With the polypath down, you see that even if I go, if I'm not anymore in wireframe, I still have my curves. I don't have the, primit the big primitives anymore, the big faces anymore, okay? So these are the points. And these are the primitives, you see? Each primitive for it. Good. So what we can do now is use a poly expand on all of this to create the sidewalks because what we wanna get here is this to be double. You know, if this doubles now, we have our sidewalks. This is just bad drawing, but pardon me for my ability in drawing, that's not the best. So here we, what we can do is put down, drop down another poly expand. Let me save first because you know it happened before I was trying it. Sometimes it crashes, so want to be sure it works. Cool. So what we can do is again offset surfaces, Oof, too much, and just offset this. Yeah, that's what we wanted. So if we merge this together with the rest, what we get? This, which has overlapping thing. Obviously, because we are starting from this line. What we can do, we can add here, we want this offset to be, you know, you, you can decide, eventually decide how width, width should be, wide should be the, the sidewalks. But also you want to make them further away or in, more into the road, depending on what you want. So what we can do is add here in the edit parameter interface, another float, 
that we'll eventually we will eventually take everything that we have here into the HDA, and we can use this like offset from row. Okay, good. But if I just move this, nothing happens. What I have to do is take this and add this to to this to this one. Well, in here, we started that this is actually defining the road itself, how far from the road it should go. So we can take this as we can change it eventually and paste it here. So we procedurally connect those. And if I uh, increase this also, the other polyxapan will increase together with it. Let me just show it better. You see? Good. So in this polyxpand, what we can do is just take, uh, oh, sorry, we, I had it in the wrong place. Sorry. In this polyxpand, Okay, we go and add the parameter interface and put down the float. Sorry, uh, offset from road. If you were thinking that that is wrong, you were right. So again, this doesn't do anything, but if we copy this and add this onto this, and we paste here relative reference, what we get is that we can actually change directly the distance from here, OK? And in here, we can just define how big we want this to be. And we can just kill this like this. Good. So here we have sharp edges. We can have more you know, rounded corners. I leave it up to you, because this goes down to another line. And it can be really easy, depending on the approach we use. But yeah, I'll leave it up to you. We have other things also we have to consider here. So here, if I go in the middle, what we can do is just you know move this up away and avoid intersection. But as we know, sidewalks are actually on a higher plane than the road. So what we can do is drop down a poly extrude here. And we can poly extrude this by some. Okay, we can just reverse here. And there we go. And let's put it just 0.5 just for the sake of demonstrating this. Yeah, we eventually don't need back because we'll be on the ground. So if we put together, even if we just decrease this, they won't we won't see that intersection anymore there is intersection but we won't see we, we won't see it okay good so what about the props for example we have hydrants all around the city we can have hydrants we can have street lights and again i propose the same way of uh, approaching this with another poly expand with any props we want to put down we can go down here, oops, here. Again, isolate this. And once we have those curves, we can use those curves to scatter points, for example, because for now we have all those points. And the approach we want to use is to drop down, you know, uh, copy the points on each point, something that we want. But maybe we don't want on every one of these points, each one of these points. So we can, for example, scatter here. And what we will get is random points that will be scattered, as you see here, okay. okay, where there are those lines. Cool, so what we can do is define how many, for example, hydrants we want. We can you know, change the global seed and change where those are placed. And we can just drop down and copy the point. We have the points here, so we connect that to the points. And just for the sake of this, not to go and find a file here to connect, I would just drop down a tube, OK? And what we'll have is something too small to be seen from here. Well, let me just do this. Height, put it down 5. Maybe we can see it much better now. We'll have those little props everywhere. See them? If we merge this with the rest, what's going to happen? We'll just give it a call. Let's give it a color just to recognize them. Oops, much faster. Like this we go red, so hydrants. Yeah. 
And we have them, but they are quite, you know, in the cut into like this. So we can, if we just, you see in the Y uh, sides of the, oh, sorry, on the Y and the center position of this tube, we can change it and we can change it based on the height of this. So we can eventually change the height and this will automatically be on top of everything. So times 05, which stands for divided by two. And here we have it. Cool. If we want more randomness onto this, we can also add a little bit of jitter here. And we just have to remember that with the jitter, what happened is that if those are the points, okay, you can see the points with the G, I, I show it on a bigger scale. I can, oh, yeah, maybe if I saw I show this, it's better. They, they move a little bit randomly. And in this way, we are moving them on X, Y, and Z. We actually want to move just on the X and Z. So we keep this to zero. And if eventually you need it, you just can just tick down update normals so that you keep the normals of the two or the points that you already have. Cool. So we have it. And we have our roads. We have our props. And we can add on to this. For example, if we just want street lights, cool. We go here. And instead of a scatter, what we can do is uh, put and set up a point jitter because you know lights just are one right next to the other what we can do is drop down a resample and define let me just go to 10 so don't put too many points here let me take this make it much higher like 15 so you get this is a straight line and these are the points that we have now but we can change this and make them less Make them more if you want it more packed. And this is what happens. These are all the street lights. Okay, we can increase it, decrease it again. We can just resample by polygon edge if we want to keep those corners sharp. Okay, and you can just play with those. Cool. So we have our props here. We just reorder it just for a second. So we have the hydrants, we have uh, the street lights, we have the sidewalk, we have the road. But something is missing in this city. And that thing are the buildings, actually, because we can have good things or we can merge this. If you click Alt and drag online, you can create this to help you align, organize everything better. So we have a lot of things. We can also here remember that we can decide as before how far from the road this should be. Okay. You can move it. Uh, same also for hydrants. You can you see hydrants here just move about par like that. Cool. So for the buildings, we're gonna go here again. And as you know, when we are we're in a game, and I'm thinking it's for games. We try to save as much memory as possible. And depending on the game, you want to fill the whole space with buildings, depending also on how big the space is. Or you just want to leave it empty and just fill up here. Or what is right on the sidewalks, like here and not here. You don't want it here unless you want it specifically, but you know, not in this case. You can eventually build your own to create that. So um, to do that, what we can do is start again from, with, from where we started from now till now and take another poly expand with a poly path like it is. I'm just alt and dragging to copy. And with the poly path, we again get this. Now, it's like, it is almost like putting down props. We made it before, but with boxes just to block out everything. Obviously, you can, as I used the two before, I'm using a box now, but you can eventually use your own props for this. No, there's no mean to use just the primitive that Udini gives us. So we can take this with all the points that we have and eventually decide how many, as before, we want to keep. So this would be too much because 0 0.1 distance between each point is quite too small. So just go with five. That's all right. And again, copy the points. 
you know, once you get into it, it's quite almost, you know, same things, just play with lines and points and you get to it. So what happens now is that those two, these boxes are really, really small. Let's say that we want to pack it so that there are no spaces to look inside. And let's make this just, yeah, a bit higher. Hey, hey. Uh, quickly yep. reminding that uh, around 10 minutes left for the next step. OK. Yeah. And so, then we start q Good. OK. So time was really, really small. And I thought it was an hour, but it's just 30 minutes. Mm -hmm uh so uh yeah we we try to uh we, we try to go for it eventually if you want the complete file that i have here you can just email me i will send it to you because this is just for all the buildings we're gonna see a little bit of little bit part of it so eventually just email me i'll show you again my email in the end so uh for the boxes we can just increase for example the sizes here and the size here as you see that this size just defines how uh, wide those are i want to if we want to pack everything we want to have this equal to the distance between each of them so we copy this and we paste it here so we have densely packed things well moreover you see here all of them are just you know, they have the same direction which is not along the road we have uh an angle here. So what we can do here is just add the normals. If we add the normals here to the road, to the points, the automatically when they are the something is copied to that point, it will take the uh, normal as direction, as main direction. So we can drop down a polyframe. Okay, my polyframe is already set to have in the tangent the n because in this way, what we get, I show you here. If we show the uh, the vectors, you see that those vectors just follow, uh, maybe it's not too visible, but here they go and go and follow one point to the next, like this. What happens if we put down this? You see? Because they get, what it's going to do is put down them, put down the boxes perpendicular to the, to the normal. So we have those buildings facing the road. But you know, there are some intersections here and we don't want them. There is a system to, uh, you know, uh, I, I build a system now to make this, uh, avoid those intersections so we can create, we can spot all those tight angles and put there something different, some kind of, you know, any kind of mesh uh, that we want. So, I'll try to go faster and try to show you everything. I'll just copy some nodes here and show you them just to give you an idea because this is just an approach that we will need. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to explain everything. So the problem with this is that, um, as I said, there are intersections. But what we want to do is take, the approach we want to use is take these angles Okay, spot those angles and try to isolate them so we can build something different on those angles. To do that, um, this is not actually the nodes we're going to use. This is, these are the nodes we're going to use. I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Which are actually connected later. But if we take this and let me say, because it always is better, we, co we convert line. So, oops, not here, sorry. Here, this goes. There you go. Okay, this later. What happens with convert line is that you see now how many uh, primitives we have. With convert line, we just divide every single segment we have here in a primitive. So with a little attribute wrangle, and these are the lines of codes that we can do them again here. But so convert line, when you drop down a convert line here you have the rest length that will give you an attribute that will give you the length of each segment of those. So what we can, what we know is that with the resample, it, try, it tries to give to all of them a five uh, length, a length of five, as we said here. But if we go and convert line and we try to take, for example, the 41, we see that, 
uh, if we go to the primitives, is not really five. Sometimes it's, it's lower. Sometimes it's just five. And sometimes it's not, depends. You can go really near to it. And if we have, for example, let me just check back. If we keep, for example, here, the mountain last vertex, we would be more sure of this. And we would have, you know, more five. You see five, five, five. Okay. And some of them would be a little bit longer. Some of them would be a little bit shorter. We want to, as this happens on the corners, what we can do is with this attribute wrangle that I wrote, thanks to, uh, to the rest length, we try to find what's the max length that is not, let's say, that, that, that says that segment is too short. And this is actually just the length of the resample. Let me just copy this and kill this. Okay, just keep it to zero. What happens here is that we lose anything. As more as we grow this, we start losing. Oof, there's some strange. Okay, on the primitives. Cool. So, oh yeah. Mm. Is it, is it getting? Yeah. So what should happen? And probably here it happens. It doesn't. Well, what we'll, I'll try to go and explain here because otherwise we go along with the lesson. Uh, what we try to do here is put down, uh, just delete those that are too short. So in this way, and let me show you here because it works here. This is what happens. This is just a thing to order points here. We go here. We order points in a way that they are kind of clockwise, okay, for each primitive of those. Each primitive is now numbered in a counterclockwise way, because in this way we get normals that we need later on. We find in this way, as I was trying to show before, what we do is through a color also, we try to color those points, those, sorry, those segments and points that are too short. So you see how the Mm, the corners become red. Okay. What we can do to isolate the, uh, the primitives is promote the attribute that we had on the points to the, to the primitives. And then we blast the primitives like this. And we have. So onto this, just to go faster and show you a little bit of everything, then again, if you want, you can contact me anytime. I'm really happy to answer your questions and if you need more or just the file, I'll be here. What we're gonna do in, in this is create the mesh for the corners. And I'd like to go into it, but I can't. So these meshes are just, you know, take the corners as they are, as we had this. See almost closed. We try to close what is closable here. You see, and we sweep through it. Obviously, the bigger this is, the better. On the other side, we try to build, as before, all the uh, houses for the rest. And we try to make some difference also in this part, where we take some of those points that we have here, because this is just you know the antithesis of this. If we put those together, we have everything as before, like here. So we isolate the straight parts, and onto this we um, we do create some that are just you know one point one box like this. You get oh sorry here yeah we, we had a little bit of jitter. You have one point one box, but not for all of them. We grouped some, okay, so that it, it is done only on some points. On the other points, we want to make something a little bit different. We don't want them just one unit. We probably want more units. So in this one, we do this and we just go through this and create something a little bit different that you can completely customize on depth, width, height, whatever. By putting everything together, we get to this. Just kill the colors and we have it. Okay. We have the road that we hit before, which is same thing, just better organized road. Ooh, road, sidewalks, props, all together comes to this in the end. And we have possibility to choose if you want to show the check, the checker, the, sh the shade of the checker, so to, to check for UVs. And this is mainly done. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I wanted to show you more, but uh, I really can't. 
So please go on with the questions. Uh, I think we can allocate the questions around 10 minutes, yeah. Uh, what? Uh, we would allocate like 10 minutes for questions. Uh, uh, you have yep. more time for your lecture. And I think it would be fair to give you more time. Yeah, let's go with the, with the questions. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, I think, I uh, no, like, uh, I think really it would be better, like, uh, if we have 10 minutes because now we have a lot, a lot of time. Okay, I, I thought it was going to end in 10 minutes. So, okay. I, yeah, just, I thought it would be better. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, guys, here we are back. We do it. We do it deeply. So, Again, just starting from this because probably it's going to be uh, hard in time uh, whatsoever to, to show every node, each one by one, and recreate everything. Um, let, let's do the process again for the buildings. So we isolated everything and we isolated this as, you know, uh, just as lines. What we did here, we have the possi possibility through this poly expand to, with the output outside here, to have something that is just outside it takes all the outside and i put those this in the parameters here we have it let me see where is it beyond here um we have in the buildings the external round of buildings you see here you can have it or not so with polyframe polypath before we just here there was a node uh one more node which is really easy what we did is what i did is take just some of those primitives, okay, with a random, okay, with a random based on the prim number, so we have each one has a different output as number here. We see if, if it is bigger than a certain percentage, okay, like which is this one. And we can just delete them like this. So in the end, we have less blocks covered with buildings if we want less. Again, we were sample like before, so we have more points. We fuse if there is anything overlapping. And then we go through this for each, which takes each single primitive, OK? And what it does is try to put them all, let's say, all clockwise. Because if we see here, uh, yeah, if we, yeah, I uh, cannot. Let me see if I can do this really fast. So OK, this way. And maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah, what happened is that we have some of them that are clockwise, some of them are counterclockwise. You see the direction of these normals goes in this direction and this direction. And it also depends as with this node, we create just the normal depending on the difference between one point and the next. So um, we just take each one of those, okay, each one of those primitives, and we want to create. So uh, we want to make the order of those points counterclockwise for all of them, so that eventually we when we recreate the normals with this, we have them all in the same, uh, you know, all in all counterclockwise too. This is important for when we go and create. We do we use a sweep here because depending on this direction, you will have. Um, I, would, I try to is a little bit of math, but not really that much. Uh, let me just draw this. Where is it? Let me check this. Okay, here it is. So uh, if we have, for example, two. two vectors which are perpendicular, there is always a third vector, vector which is perpendicular. There is one thing in uh, um, math that enables us to understand in which that in which verse this should be, if up or down. And this is called the screw, uh, screw driver or the screw uh, rule, which depending on how this turns, and if you go, if you see here, the normals go this way, this way, this way, this way. It means that we have a counterclockwise, and this will mean that we're going up. Okay, like when you have a screw, you go up. So this goes up. 
Well, if we have on, if we find here, and there could be some like this one, for example, this goes, you see here, like this, and it goes like this, you would go down because we're putting down the screw. So like this, you see this clockwise. Okay, so we want them all counterclockwise so that everything we build will go up. Good, now, good math explanation. I'm also a mechanical engineer, if you just need that. <laughs> um, so through this piece of network, what we do is just that. So that you see here, those are just changing. Let me, I'm getting a bit more bigger. They just change. And also the numbering of those points. Cool. So in this way, we again find the, the corners here. Let me just put those down. You don't see anything. Cool. We blast them. And then we work on this so that mm, we can extend them depending. So we just isolate. What we do here with this attribute wrangle is to isolate the points that are on the external part. How we do this is just we convert line. So as each one of those is uh, a different primitive, OK, what we can do is uh, with a polyframe, what happens is that if you use a polyframe with a primitive centroid here, instead of first edge or two edges, the normals will point to the center of the primitives. But now the primitive is just a segment. So all the points will go right in the middle. Okay. So we oriented this because we want to push those points right one uh, against each other. To do that, uh, again, we isolate those points. And to isolate those points, what we do is uh, try to, we take all of those primitives. Okay. What happens? Every, every one of those primitives, like this primitive, has two points, and uh, this point has two primitives. But this point and this point and all all of them that are on the outside are just uh, they have just one primitive. So we can isolate them in this way, and we just extend those points that we grouped here. Okay, group to extend. You see, we we take the with point prims. We take how many prims every point has. T is equal to one. We group them, and then we extend them. And we extend of uh, length, which is half of the distance between each uh, between each point. So in this way, um, again, we go down the line. We just rework this a little bit. We resample it, so it makes a little bit better. Maybe uh, no, not sharp, not too sharp corners. And uh, with this node, which is just one that I did for myself, uh, what you do is create the right and up vectors, uh, if you see it, directly from the normal. So you have a normal. And um, based on this normal, you create right or up. You can just negate it, negate up, negate n. You can do whatever uh, with this. And, you, and we can use that. Because what happens is that if we just build onto this, let me see if we can do it here. If we build onto this. OK, what happens is that um, if we just go here, it can happen that those are not aligned with the rest, OK, like this. So with this, we can just move them. What, what this node eventually does, which is now 0 because we don't need it, uh, we can move the points based on the right vector and not the normal. For example. So we multiply, we just add on the position the vector times a multiplier, which is here. Again, we have a connectivity. Just what, what does this connectivity do is take each one of those connected pieces. All of those are different connected pieces and give them an attribute to make each one of them different. So this, for example, will have one. This will have two. Uh, let, let me just show you this here. If we take this and we show selected. We have, well, where is it? Yeah, we put that on the points. Corners, corners, corners. You see, this is 78. But if I go into uh, all of the points of 78, if I go here, we have all of the points 79. So, sorry, 69. And then what we can do as the sweep can take a scale factor, what we can do is take this scale factor. And this scale will uh, make, with the sweep, you just take 
like a shape like the grid and copy that onto each point that we have and then skin everything so we get this with the scale you can define how different each depending on the class it should be so for example if you randomize on the class as this class just defines each connected piece differently then we can increase the height and we in this case we do it with other channels but we can just far four and and eight for example or just one and two and these are minimum and maximum so not not all of them are equal actually something probably not working but anyway i will just try to fix it um with the sweep you get this and then again here in this one in the other pieces that we were living apart for now we again put them all together we just take some points out of those not all of them so yeah. that we scatter just on that point yeah yeah okay <laughs> i think uh, we, we can start now okay it's okay yeah 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 i mean it's just, I, I finished everything in the end you get this and with the parameters people can change whatever they want as i said before so yeah you're in for questions great uh first question i would ask from you like um, what is your favorite part of uh, this process <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite part, uh, I, I used to play volleyball, but uh, now I, I just do, you know, free, free body, uh, like that, gymnastic. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and how did you, like, overall uh, chose this as your profession? When how did you chose what, sorry? Yeah. How did you choose uh, this as your profession and went into the industry? Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm born as a mechanical engineer and I really like to create complex systems, also connected your know, procedural system in general. I then came across um, CGI in my life and games. I, I used to play and I still play a lot of games. Uh, so I'm really into this world and I decided to put everything together. So I found possibility to, find, to work at Decimated, which is a, 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 a game in, in the future, in a sci-fi uh, environment, post-apocalyptic environment, and we had to create a lot of different cities. So I said, I mean, that's a good point to start with this. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, and now we're starting with questions of our audience. Uh, first one, uh, what would be your approach for optimization of the city for import? For import, so what, okay. Uh, eventually, uh, what we have now is just gray boxing everything because we don't have meshes uh, like you know final assets for this. You can use keep bash assets, you can use whatever assets you want. So in, what we can do is, for example, um, pack when we do copied points, we can pack the those elements so that they are eventually recognized into unreal as one so you can just you know take each one of uh, each one of them is automatically replaced with one of your assets and this will um, make it uh, optimize a little bit the movement of everything and um, what we can do is eventually it depends obviously on what we need i also studied a system just to make it more you know less procedural by painting the areas where you want the city center or white areas and these depending on the city that you want can speed up the process and speed up optimize uh also everything for for unreal by we, you can use pdgs to make uh, smaller chunks of this city and uh deliver each that that's get really complicated can get really complicated and in this way you can just divide you know by 100 by 100 squares work and it automatically works on them and builds the city in the end. So this optimizes it a little bit. And there are probably a lot of other ways to do this. Uh, if they come to our mind, I will be happy to answer you more on this. Uh, the next question. Yeah. Uh, did you already try the new Houdini engine tool for Unreal features? Uh, I, uh, I I looked at them, I didn't try them. 
I know that one thing that you can do, for example, in this case, use the sync between the Unreal and Udini, which uh, enables you to work on Udini and have everything on a real, like almost real time. The good thing is that uh, Udini processes much faster than Unreal. So you can work with our open Udini uh, environment on the left, for example, and the right real engine, and you get really faster on that. And there are a lot of other things like, indeed, the PDGs for the, they actually existed before, but uh, in the video that Udini show, uh, side effects show it, you can really create a desert map really, really fast and other things. It's quite cool, it's quite cool, Ella. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, then the, there is a question. What's the most usable of them, in your opinion, that you've made already? In all of the... In, in all of the yeah, in all of these new, new, uh, new features. Well, I really like this thing of syncing the um, Udini and, and a real. And, and that, one, that one was one of the, of the me most memorable best. As I said, I didn't use it yet. And I really like PDGs. I have to dig down them better. And I think that for that, for the new announcement they made for the also 18.5, uh, it could be quite good. It could be quite good. For the Udini engine itself, I would like to give you more answers, but yeah, I have to try it. So I better not say lies or, or okay. not real stuff. Um, and also interesting, uh, what was like, uh, what are the tips that uh, really sped up, that sped up your process? Maybe you have some. So, okay. Process. Okay. Yeah. Mm, what well, really to, to speed up this process, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, by showing people what you did and trying to do it with them is really, it seems fast. I also noticed this because I watch a lot of tutorial tutorials every, every week. And it seems like it's really easy to do, but to do this and to make it as simple as possible, it took me hours of work. Uh, and in this way, I found some things that should really speed up the process. Like for example, really uh, trying to stick as much as possible on points and lines. So in this way, what you get is, um, you know, you have less geometry, and Udini doesn't have too much to handle. And eventually, in the end, you just put all the things that you need on those points or on those lines. So as much as you can, just work with points and lines. Actually, one, one tutorial showed me this particular, a particular approach on this, and it was you know, a bit mind-blowing because it really sped up, sped up my own process. Great. OK. Um, yeah, Okay, we've covered questions. If you have any like tips or anything you want to share, like yeah, I I can I show you again my my email, my Instagram. If you want to follow me there, if you want to find me, you can bring my email anytime. I'd be happy to answer you. If you want the file and you want to check it out on your own, if you want to play with it, if you want to build more onto it, just write to me and I write you back with a, with the file. If there is any question I can answer, I have a lot to learn. So eventually, if I see that you know much more than me, I will probably write you back much more. So uh, be ready for anything. And I really like Bring Me the Horizon. So if you like Bring Me the Horizon, just let me know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So guys, yeah, if you, if, if you have any questions, uh, feel free uh, to contact Pira. And um, yeah. The lecture turned out great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. For everyone. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Spanish. Yeah, we're ending the stream.